Hello, my dear friends. Today's video is about the placement of the MSC appliance, which is the maxillary skeletal expander. And we will discuss how the whole process of placement and delivery works, what are the stages, how long it lasts, and the perception of how the patients perceive the whole procedure and what are the expectations and how to talk about the procedure with the patients. We'll talk about the activation of appliance and we'll have a small video comparing the uh, activation, turning the screw with MSC and with the regular expander, which differs a lot. And there's a lot of, uh, I would say, technical differences. And um, MSC, from my, my experience, is way easier to activate. And we'll talk about this specific particular um, regimen on how to activate the MSC comparing compared to the regular expander. So this is what we're going to talk today. This is how it looks inside the mouth before we put the pins in. Mm -hmm. This is exactly after a placement and this is tight. As you recall, the MSC is the expansion, the bony expansion, when we move two halves of the maxilla apart. And the first thing the first thing is the, is the procedure itself. So we started with, the, uh, with cementing the appliance in place. We use the regular cement for the uh, band's placement, the band cementation. In this, um, in this particular case, I used the dual cure 3M Unitech uh, band cement and uh, we cure it for 40 seconds each side. After that, I usually start with, I usually go to the anesthetic part. So I anesthetize the palate, I use the topical anesthetic, and then I use the regular infiltration. I would say, and maybe from the patients, um, I would say feedback, this is the most inconvenient part of the whole procedure, as the rest of the procedure is pretty much, um, it, it pretty much feels as pressure and not too much of pain, I would say. But the anesthetic part, which which uh, relates to the most sensitive part of the oral mucosa with less fat tissue and a lot of nerve endings on the palate, of course, it's a bit sensitive. So. Um, I'm honest with my patients and I always tell them that this part may be or will be sensitive and you have to be prepared to, for that. Uh, but this is uh, the only last, I would say, a minute or so. So it's not, uh, it's not that long, so you have to think about it. And once we're done with this part, we, the patient uh, literally relaxes and I always tell them that uh, the most you feel would be pressure, will be pressure and uh, no more than that. So we we try uh, the um, sensitivity of the palate after the anesthesia is done. We, we try it with an explorer and after that we start the insertion procedure. And as you may appreciate, the insertion procedure itself, uh, it has two stages. So we have this manual manual screwdriver, uh, which is a very short screwdriver because you have to fit it uh, within the patient's oral cavity and you have to fit your fingers because uh, one of the fingers, your index finger, it rests on top of the screwdriver. And uh, the uh, the other hand you're, us you're using, this hand, uh, it it uh, turns the screwdriver so that you secure this uh, uh, the pin inside the patient's bone. And while you're doing that, you feel the resistance twice. The first time you feel the resistance and the first time the patient feels the resistance of the screw going into the palate is when we penetrate the cortical bone facing the oral uh, cavity and the second time is the cortical uh, bone which faces the floor of the nasal cavity itself. Um, the second stage of the insertion of the pin insertion itself is the uh, wrench that we use to, to secure the pin uh, on the, during the final stage of its insertion. And uh, we secure it with, uh, sometimes we need uh, a little bit more, a little more turns than, it's not a turn, it's a little movement. I would say it's 45 degree movement that secures, that gives a little, uh, torque uh, to make the screw being uh, tighter.
This is an example of uh, orthodontic acceleration of the palatal expansion in an adult patient when we did the piezosurgical uh, cuts. The periodontist who did the procedure uh, did the 7 millimeter uh, cut in cuts into the palatal mucosa so that it moves faster and opens faster. That's a short overview on the placement and activation of the appliance. Uh, this is the activation itself, the hex gun key that we use for activation and the uh, way uh, we compare it to the Hyrex expander and Hyrex activation. See how hard it is to find this spot. So the patients usually report um, some discomfort during the first week of activation and we usually activate it for six turns in the morning and for six turns in the evening. In uh, some cases, when the patients are uh, very sensitive, we ask to do to perform those uh, turns uh, in couples. We do two turns, then wait a couple of minutes, and then do s several more turns. So it depends on the individual. And it's very, very uh, different in all patients on what they report. I hope this video was able to answer at least some of your questions. You can put your comments underneath the video and leave your questions and we will make a new one to answer the uh, new incoming questions from you. Thank you and subscribe.